want to learn how to manage your own investments? Are you ready to stop paying investment management fees and start building wealth? The DIY Investing Podcast is dedicated to providing you with the knowledge, skills, and resources you need to be a better investor. Learn how to make investments through the use of fundamental analysis, mental models, and business management insights. Now, here's your host, value investing expert, Trey Henninger. Hello and welcome to episode 22 of the DIY Investing Podcast. My name is Trey Henniger and I'm your host. In today's episode, I will be discussing the new direct-to-consumer offering by Disney, Disney+. Plus. I'll give you a breakdown of why I believe Disney Plus improves the quality of Disney's business model. This episode will not only give you greater insight into Disney as a business, but also how I think about business quality in general. Brief aside, that this is a listener-supported COD podcast. If you'd like to support this podcast and help me continue creating great investing content, please consider becoming a patron at DIYinvesting.org slash patron. Members of my patron program receive exclusive benefits relating to my personal investing process. This includes the business quality report, which I have produced on Disney, and you can find a link that to that in the podcast notes. Also, please consider giving me a rating and review on your podcast player. Those ratings and reviews help me to find new listeners and to spread the word about this great program. If you like it, please let me know. And if not, feel free to give me feedback so I can continue to get better. So let's dive right on in. Disney Plus is Disney's new streaming service. They announced it this week, and it is priced at $7 a month or $70 per year, which works out to a little under $6 per month. That's $5.83 per month if you pay in advance. Basically, you receive two months free if you do the annual payment option. Disney Plus will launch on November 12th, 2019, and People who subscribe to Disney Plus will gain access to Disney's incredible library of old TV shows and movies. And this library is huge. This will include the entire Pixar lineup of movies by the end of the first year, all of the Marvel Cinematic Universe eventually, but Captain Marvel, recently released in theaters, will be available on day one in, on November 12th. National Geographic's shows will be available and all nine main Star Wars movies, including the soon-to-be-released ninth culmination of the Skywalker saga, and Rogue One and Solo will be added in addition to that. The historic Disney Channel movies and TV shows will be available, as well as the signature collection of Disney classics, including Cinderella and Lion King. So it's a brief introduction to all the stuff that's available on Disney Plus. So what does this mean? Disney Plus is basically a Netflix competitor. So Netflix is a streaming service that has become incredibly popular with over 120, maybe over 130 million subscribers worldwide by now. And Disney is now entering the space. They announced that they were entering this space a year or two ago as their way to target directly to consumers instead of licensing their content to other providers. This will change the business model for Disney significantly. And this is probably the largest change for Disney in decades in terms of their overall strategy for how they address the consumer market. So Disney historically has been very much focused on entertainment and entertainment in all forms. They're trying to develop movies and TV shows that resonate with their audience. And they focus on storylines, specifically branded storylines, that they can then produce a whole bunch of content around. And they have been doing this longer than anyone else in the business. Disney has intellectual property for their characters that goes back decades so that you have cross-generational interest and love for Disney's characters. The, you know, Mickey Mouse, Lion King, Cinderella, 
not even counting the Star Wars and the Marvel movies now, you have access to characters as part of Disney that span decades and decades of production. Meanwhile, Netflix is very recent, and so they have historically had to license all the content on their streaming service from players like Disney, and they would pay Disney millions and millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars to license their content in order to entice users to come onto their service. So what does this mean for the marketplace? Well, in general, this is definitely attacking Netflix's business model. Now, Disney isn't trying to destroy Netflix, but what they are doing is they are carving out a niche that is going to be incredibly strong. The description of what is available on the new Disney Plus when it launches on November 12th and all of the movies and TV shows, they're estimating that in the first year they'll have over 7,500 episodes of TV and over 500 movies available is going to be a must-have for anyone with children, primarily within the United States, but these properties are are popular across the world. And Disney is projecting that their streaming service over time will probably be about one-third United States subscribers and two-thirds international subscribers. But when you think about this, if you're a United States parent and you have children, your children like watching Disney stuff. They're incredibly popular, whether that is Pixar movies and or Disney Channel TV shows, Disney Channel movies, or whether it's even Marvel movies, there's something in this service that that applies to almost every young child in America. And that applies whether they're young or in their teenage years. And so what this has done is Disney is targeting the family niche and all these family-friendly content, and they are stacking the box on this service such that if you have kids, you're going to want to sign up for this service because it is an incredible deal. Disney's service costs $7 a month or $70 a year, and so doing the yearly cost is a better for the consumer. So if you're looking at this $70 a year, for $70 a year, you can receive unlimited access to Disney's content. And your children and you will have access to that without buying or renting any additional movies. These days, to buy a 4K movie could cost you $25 or $30 if you buy it retail in the store. So for a price of $70 a year, you're talking three movies. If you were to just buy three movies, you can get the same entertainment content for the whole year, but have access to hundreds of movies that Disney has produced in addition to historic Disney Channel content. That's an insane value proposition for consumers. And what it'll equate to is basically because it is so beneficial for consumers and so cheap relative to the alternatives, Disney's basically going to be levying like a $70 per year tax on families in America. And this is going to be very broad and very enduring. Because once you have this, it's going to be sticky. People are not going to want to leave the service because they will have access to so much content. The interesting thing about Netflix, at least in my personal experience, is that they have a lot of TV shows. They have a lot of movies. But the good movies that end up on the service have usually come from their licensing. And they usually, in large part, have come from Disney. So if you wanted to watch one of the Avengers movies or the Iron Man or Black Panther on Netflix, those movies in the future will not be on Netflix. They will only ever be on Disney+. And once all of those movies and the rights that Netflix has purchased for those licenses expire, they will then go on to Disney Plus in the future and stay there. What that means is that these very powerful and very strong brands that Disney has been producing and licensing to others, they are bringing back home. They're going to make their service the exclusive provider for this, which means not only are families going to be interested in Disney's new service, Disney Plus, you're also going to have 
many, many adults interested in this. If you are a Star Wars fan, this is going to be the service that you'll want to buy. And for $7 a month, you'll have unlimited access to Star Wars, new Star Wars TV shows, new Star Wars movies. And you're going to get to see and rewatch them all in 4K um, and have it just for this monthly, low monthly fee. And to speak about the fees for a second, $7 a month is well below what Netflix is charging for their services. You have Netflix's $13 monthly fee on its most popular plan in the U.S., but Disney is targeting half that price at $7 a month. And it's even cheaper, of course, if you do the yearly cost. What this means is that they're ensuring that they're not going to be the streaming service that isn't selected. You know, when these streaming wars play out, when Netflix is competing against Disney and Disney's competing against Amazon, Amazon's competing against Apple and Apple's competing against Comcast and HBO, and you have all these five or six services competing each other, Disney's setting out their flag and saying, we are going to be one of the services that stays and we are going to win because we can accept a lower price for our subscriptions than you can. And we can do this because we have already created and made a profit from this content for 50, 60, 70 years. So you have competitors that are starting with new content that they're having to pay multiple billions of dollars to create today. And you have Disney saying, we've produced movies for approximately 100 years. And those movies are available. And we don't have to spend new money to develop them. We're going to have all of your favorites, all the nostalgia that you have on stuff that you grew up on. We're going to have it, and we're going to have it available for a low monthly fee. And we're going to be half the price of our competitors. So you have HBO at $15 a month. You have Disney Plus at $7 a month. You have Netflix at $13 a month. Disney's the cheapest. And you could argue they will be the best streaming service available. So what does it mean for Disney to have now launched a direct-to-consumer product and how does it impact their business model? So the important thing to understand about Disney's business model is that content is king. And Disney is the king of content. And what this means is that as an entertainment giant, Disney has positioned themselves as a key player in content production, and their content is the most valuable content that there is. Disney movies and the movies that they own the rights to fill a vast majority of the most profitable and the highest grossing films that are released every single year for the past decade. They own the rights to the highest grossing movies of all time, Avatar, and although they and movies like The Avengers, Star Wars, they're at the top of these lists. And by having that content, they're able to now repurpose that, produce sequels, produce more content, and grow these large brands that are incredibly resonating with consumers and continue to build on them into the future. But that's not the only secret of Disney. The secret of Disney's business model is that they earn more for the content that they create than anyone else in the industry. Because this entertainment giant has a flywheel effect that allows shareholders to profit off of the branded content in numerous ways. So not only does Disney produce movies that they release into theaters, they are able to sell those movies again with DVDs, movie rentals, and and movie purchases. They're able to sell those movies again by producing theme park rides at Disney World and Disneyland. They're able to monetize those movies again with branded cruise lines, the Disney Cruise Lines. They're able to monetize those movies again by toy sales and licensing. And now they have added a brand new addition, which is direct-to-consumer streaming service, Disney+. Plus. On top of that, if you don't even count movies, they also have TV channels like the Disney Channel. And they're able to then now re-monetize the Disney Channel onto all of those things, whether it be DVDs and rentals, the streaming service, toy sales, the cruise lines, and the theme parks. And what all this means is that the direct 
direct-to-consumer streaming service for Disney Plus combines the best parts of your TV channels, your movie rentals, and your theater releases. You're able to have permanent access to your favorite movies and TV shows. You're able to do that with a low monthly fee without having to spend hundreds or even thousands of dollars to acquire access to those movies by purchasing physical copies of these DVDs. This is an enormous savings for the consumer, and it will be an enormous benefit for Disney because when they sell a DVD, Disney doesn't actually receive 100% of that revenue. You have to split money with the DVD manufacturer. You have to split money with the retailer. You have to split money with the wholesaler and the shipping companies. Instead, Disney Plus takes away all of those middlemen and instead says, hey, we produce the content. Come and get it from us. And the consumer saves money, and Disney receives a sticky customer relationship that will create lasting fans. And the important thing is by going directly to consumer, they're able to gain the same benefits that Netflix has done. They will know to a greater degree than they ever have how popular their movies and TV shows are. They'll be able to gain analytical data on when consumers stop watching their movies when they stop watching their TV shows. They'll start to understand better what resonates with their consumer and with their target audience. And by doing that in a direct way, they're creating an ever closer relationship, which will further and further increase the lifetime value of a Disney customer. And this is a Disney customer who already has the highest lifetime value out of any entertainment producer in the world. This is not an understatement. Disney is the entertainment giant of the world, and it cannot be underestimated how powerful these brands are and how strongly they resonate with customers. The key part here for the future business model of Disney is so far when they produce a movie, they basically have short-term impacts from the income from that movie. You have... You produce a movie and then you put it in theaters and then it can either be a flop if it if it has a or it can be a success. And that all depends upon a three to six week time frame on do people see the movie? Do they spend a lot of money in this one period to see this movie? Well, Disney's changing now. Now they're not getting rid of movie theaters at the moment, but what it does do is it means that even if a movie would be a flop in theaters, they can still produce it and put it exclusively on their streaming service. And if it can bring in 100,000 new monthly subscribers that stay on the service for 10 years, well, that's basically a million years worth, a million, like, user years times $70. That's a $70 million income for the company by just producing that movie and putting it on its streaming service. But instead, that movie might not have been able to receive $70 million of revenue by putting it out in a theater. And what this does is Disney's now able to create a sticky relationship between their customers And it broadens how Disney can serve them because they don't have to target super large audiences with every movie they produce. They can have niche groups that join Disney and then convert them over time into enjoying other Disney content. Because if you're on Disney Plus and you like the Avengers and you're already paying for Disney Plus, well, just because you're a Marvel fan does not mean that you are a Star Wars fan. Well, if you are on the service and then you decide to try out watching Star Wars, Disney might easily create a new Star Wars fan because you have now access to the full Star Wars universe. What this will allow Disney to do is to broaden the appeal for all of its content and make sure that if you're a Disney fan, you will stay a Disney fan because you're going to be able to see all the different things that Disney produces. They're also going to lock in families when they have young children, and this can create lifelong fans because when you're a child, you're very impressionable, and the heroes and stories that you learn as a child will stick with you the rest of your life, and Disney specializes in producing very positive, very good stories that resonate with people and resonate with children, and when you create a positive brand relationship with children, families, and young parents, you're able to sustain that over a lifetime. 
And when you start thinking about what it means for the streaming service to be sticky, and you have children that are 5, 10, 15 years old, and they're growing up with Disney+, Plus, and then they go to college, it's going to be natural for them to continue to subscribe to Disney+, Plus on their own. And so Disney+, Plus, every time they create a new customer, they're creating a $70 per year annual annuity to shareholders that is setting us setting up Disney to have that direct connection into people's lives for the rest of their lives. And this is going to be incredibly valuable to consumers, as I've mentioned previously, but it's also going to be incredibly valuable to shareholders because sticky revenue, revenue that sticks around in subscription revenue, is the best kind of revenue for a business because what it allows a business to do is that they can do long-term planning by knowing that they have a direct audience that they can appeal to. And as long as they continue to appeal to that audience, they will continue to receive the revenue that they have set out for them. You're not seeking new customers every year. You're not creating a movie to hope and just hope that you it's quite successful. Instead, you're, you're targeting an audience, you understand that audience, and you're providing that audience with value. This makes Disney's business model much more reliable and much more successful than it already is. And so Disney Plus is doing a few things. Disney Plus is creating, number one, a great value for the consumer. And this has to be number one, is that you're presenting a value to the consumer that they are going to want to have in their lives. They're going to want to pay for Disney Plus because it makes their life better. So that's number one. Number two, Disney Plus is creating the premier streaming service because they already own all the best content. And with their purchase of Fox, they're going to have even more content available for their studios and for their Disney Plus offering. So you have an incredible value for consumers. And number two, you have the best streaming service. Number three, you combine Disney Plus, which is the best streaming service, with the current flywheel effect that Disney has in its business, where it monetizes its content with theme parks and cruise lines and toy sales and licensing. You combine a new streaming service with that And it becomes even more profitable because the lasting fans that you create in Disney Plus will then go on to visit your theme parks, visit your cruise lines, and buy toys. That relationship and that interconnectedness is the future of Disney's business model. And even though Disney has been incredibly successful in the past and their content has created a this enormously powerful brand behind Disney, it's only going to get stronger. So Disney is already an incredibly high quality company and entertainment is an infinitely durable business model because we're always going to be want to entertain. No matter what century we live in, entertainment is going to exist. And what Disney is doing with Disney Plus is they're saying, we are here to stay and we are here to stay in a way that's going to be profitable and beneficial for our fans and consumers and it's going to be profitable and beneficial for our employees and movie producers because they are going to have reliable audience and it's going to be profitable and beneficial for our shareholders because they're going to have a reliable income stream that's going to grow and grow over time so that's my breakdown of disney plus and how disney plus improves the quality of disney's business model please consider becoming a patron and supporting us and so that I can continue to be producing this great content without any advertisements. If you choose to become a patron of this show, you will receive exclusive insights into my personal investing process through the DIYinvesting.org membership program. And remember, one of those benefits is that you cannot gain access to my business quality reports, of which I already have one published on my site about Disney. You can find a link to that business quality report in the show notes, and you can find the full show notes for this episode, including my outline for today's podcast on DIYinvesting.org slash episode 22. Thank you for listening, and until next time, stop paying fees, start building wealth.
Thank you for listening to the DIY Investing Podcast. Please visit our website and subscribe to our email list at DIYinvesting.org for guides, videos, and resources to help make you a better investor. The DIY Investing Podcast is presented for general informational and entertainment purposes only. I have not considered your specific situation or risk profile, and I have not provided investment advice. The information presented on the DIY Investing Podcast should not be construed as investment advice. The views and opinions expressed on the DIY Investing Podcast are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of the show's host or sponsors. DIY Investing, its producers, sponsors, and host, Trey Henniger, shall not be liable for losses resulting from investment decisions based upon information or viewpoints presented on the DIY Investing Podcast.